Okay, guys, here we go. So, uh, so today's going to be fairly juicy, and we'll see if I get through all of it. I probably won't, as usual. Um, but I'm going to, so, so everybody um, go to your computers. I hope you have your computers. And clone this form demo, form demo uh, GitHub uh, account, and just crank it up into your, into your, um, into your editors. While you do that, I'm going to explain what it is. Basically, it's, it's a lot of the stuff you need to do for the homework. And as I said, you're welcome to look at it, but you're not welcome to copy it. And I will notice. Um, uh, and um, basically, but I went a little bit beyond the assignment to illustrate some other points. So it's pretty simple. There's a, a model called item, which is the thing that was lost and that needs to be found. There's a, a, a category called, uh, rather a model called category, which is the type of thing it is. Is it a, you know, electronic gear, whatever. Uh, and it, there's a, an item called, a model called comment, which is as if people say, I think I saw it in this classroom. Okay, I found it, it's all set. So just a comment thread, all right? There's a fourth one called sample, just ignore that one. I actually created that one with the scaffold so I could cop, copy and paste myself if I forgot exactly how to do something. So just ignore that one. All right, so let's think about this for, ex for, a, sec for, for a second, once you guys are, uh, are caught up. Um, let's think about if I want to look at my, um, by the way, William, um, get, uh, get your computer up and uh, clone this uh, the GitHub account so we can look at the code. Um, but let's talk about uh, what would the, and I'm going to try to do something new. I'm going to try to work my way left to right to get everybody a chance to answer a question. What would the URL look like to show all items? Alex. What would the URL look like to show all items? Um, you can pass and I'll come back to you. Yeah, because that's actually something I haven't figured out. Okay. What does the URL look like to show all items? What, what could it look like? Not what does it look like? I mean, it could be whatever, slash item, slash index, or just slash items. Just slash items, exactly. Um, what would be a good URL for search, Miranda? Okay, um, that's very good. Um, George, yes? Maybe also with a parameter. Like slash item, slash search, question mark, whatever. Yep. Query equals. <coughs> yep, yep. Um, any other idea? What, no, let me ask it differently. That, that to me implies that it's returning that the search is only among items. What if I want to be able to search among everything? Slash search. Slash search, right? Okay. Um, what would be a good URL to show a list of comments. Um, James. Jacob? Huh? Jacob, sorry. Jacob, <laughs> sorry. Um, are the comments with underneath like a post or is it just the comments on your own? That's a, exactly why I said think again. So let's take it to the former. Okay, so it's <coughs> underneath the post would be slash post slash ID for post slash yep. comments. Exactly, right. Um, Okay, what would be the URL for creating a comment? Wendy? What would the URL be for creating a comment? Oh, well, you should be on time, then you won't have the problem. Yeah. Uh, how about you? What's the URL for creating a comment? What might it be? Okay, that's all right. It does depend. On the same thing as the item or well, in, 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 if you were building the system, um, I mean, it would be, okay, I'm making a comment about an item. So what would an item be? I want to create a slash. No, no, use right. be precise. Let me no. say something. So let's think about it. So get this, um, get your computer out, and uh, there's a URL for a GitHub account here to uh, clone onto your computer. Be precise. If you can. Item slash item slash comment. Okay, Bert, can you refine that? I guess it should be a post. A post noun? A post for a variety of yeah. post and message. Same URL as the <laughs> like, uh, item slash item slash F number yeah. slash common. common Comment and new, but that's try to do that. Yeah, well, we'll get to that, but you're right, exactly. Because item slash three 
slash comment slash new. Okay? Um, okay. So let's everybody call up the route, the routes.rb file. <coughs> Where, what directory is that in, Steve? Sorry, what? What directory is the routes.rb file in? Config. Config, yep. Okay, everybody look at config for routes.rb. Yes, sir. Uh, how important is it that we get this up on our machines? I can't get any, I can't get the course site to load. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Just do a search for GitHub. Maybe you don't have a connection. Your connection's not working. Connection's in the network, and I can get like Google to load. Yeah. I just can't uh, get on the course site. Okay, well you can search in GitHub for my name and then form demo. Okay. Um, okay, but anyway, it's on the board anyway. So in the meanwhile, you can look. Um, so, uh, um, Ken, uh, remember to ignore samples. What does the first <laughs> resource line do? Give it a, 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 it's a, it's a multi, multi sentence answer. It, it, uh, it gets resource items, um, then it runs the search method and the do search method. No, no, I'm just looking at this line, nothing else. Oh, the, that, that, that. This line, sorry, the resource categories, that one line. What does it do? Oh, it, um, it calls up categories and makes, I guess, brings into that the fact that it's one of many, many one. Okay, um, yes. Uh, it provides the default methods that, the, or the default routes that should be available, like show, index, new, yep. create. Yep, exactly. It, can you say what the URL looks like that it's it's it sort of uh, corresponds to? It's that would correspond to anything that would be slash categories, slash, and then that whole family. How would you check them? How would you see them? Great routes. Great routes. Okay, exactly. Okay. Did you have a question, or were you just going to help? Okay, good. Ethan, what <laughs> I'm going to give you a hard one. Sorry. Uh, what is the? Well, I'm going to jump into the in, in, to line 11. What does a line 11 do? Do you think? Give him a chance to think. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not Ethan. Oh, I'm there's, sorry. There's no Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you are Evan. Evan. Oh, you could have. You knew I was. No. E, I, I, e star A star N. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a Regex. Sorry. sorry. What was the question? I'm sorry. What is line? I did this before the other day. Line 11 do. Line 11. Um, it specifies which methods can be called specifically. Okay, but uh, and which which routes are going to be created specifically? Okay, so what is the what is one of the routes that are created by that line? Index. Index that we create. No, give, give me a give me a slash blah slash blah slash blah. Route. Oh, uh, slash comment slash index. Okay. Or, well, not slash index, but slash new and slash create. Okay. Um, yeah, only index and create, but that's not exactly right. Uh, William, you wanna? Um, uh, amend that. Line 11 still? Line 11, yep. Uh, it's the same as the, the categories, but it, uh, it restricts those uh, resources or methods to only those three. Index. So give me a sample of URL. Uh, so it would be comments slash index. Okay, oh, Burke. Yeah. So we don't have the comments to be editor. Say louder. We don't have, we don't have the comments to be editor. Yeah. That's why it's there, but somebody's missing a very big elephant in the room. Yes? The, you want the routes, right? Yeah. Uh, items slash comments slash index new or create. Not exactly right, but you're onto the right idea. Uh, yes? You're just missing the index. It would be items slash oh, the index the ID. item slash comment slash. Exactly. Mm. Very good. OK. It's a tricky one. OK, who? Uh, not who. I'm going to just go around. So. Um, uh, Jonathan, what does line eight do? Line eight? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, good. Very excellent answer. I love it. Good. Um, coming around, Luca, what does line eight do? It's, I mean, that's the root for how you get to items slash search. Okay, but can you, uh, so give me the, the root, the URL that it generates, in other words? Maybe you just said it. I'm sorry. Items just, slash search. Okay. And, um, uh, okay, that's right. Um, and then line nine, Alex? It's the 
same thing, but yeah. do search, whatever do search is. Yeah, right. Okay, now, um, Miranda, what does line uh, seven do? That's the hardest one of all. It groups the items. It, it, it's uh, on the entire collection of items, not on an individual item. Yeah, so what is the URL interpretation so of that? Right. Yeah, everybody get that? Um, yes? Can you say it again? Can yes. It again? Miranda, so say it again. It's the search and do search are on the entire collection of items, not an individual item. So instead of having item slash a particular number slash search, it's just item slash search. Right. Exactly. Or do search. Exactly. Good. Excellent. Um, great. Any, any uh, lingering questions about what you see here? Um, All right, um, quick rake tips that I use a lot in doing this, uh, this application. I want to remind you of them. Rake DB migrate reset. Jacob, do you know what that does? It will clear up database for the print you have and then repopulate it based on the migration file. Exactly. Wait, can you repeat that? Yeah, repeat that. So it will reset the database and then it will repopulate the database. So in other words, if you've made a change to your uh, migrations, like I do all the time, uh, instead of adding more and more migrations to sort of add a column, delete it, rename it, add it again, you end up with 20 <coughs> migrations and everything gets confusing. In the early stages of development, for a while anyway, I will always do rake DB migrate reset because it just make, keeps my migrations clean. I can look back on them and understand what they're doing. Okay? Um, what's the next line do? Um, Name, drawing blank next to Jacob. Samir. Samir, sorry. What's the next line do? Oh, sorry, not what's, what's, what's rate DDC do? Uh, I, I OK. What does it do? Um, in the database, there's a file called C. And yes. It will create things, and it will create those. Exactly. So let's take a look at the migrations. Um, so go to where are the migration files? Yeah, exactly. DB migration file subdirectory. Um, I'm going to look there and I will find migrate. I have four migration files, even though I went back and forth a lot, and that kept my life simple. And if you look at each migration file, uh, it basically, as you know, there's a, what you might call a domain specific language for defining what a schema looks like. Uh, and the fact that it says def change tells you that this is a reversible migration which means that you could write a migration to add a column, add a column, and then go back and it would delete the column, go back and it would delete the column. And this is like, obviously, you've seen this a million times. Um, okay, and um, so when I do rake db migrate, it just basically deletes the database, deletes everything, and starts over. Now we're going to look at the seeds. And I, I did some interesting techniques here, which I, wa I wanted to show, well, first of all, because it was convenient, but also because I want to just drive home the point that the seeds file is just another Ruby file. Nothing magic about it except it runs within Rails. Okay? Who can tell me what line 12, line 10 does and why I have it there? No, not who. George, it's your turn. What does line 12 do and uh, right line 10 do and why do I have it there? Well, categories seem to be um, a subclass of my record base. Yeah. So it has to destroy all yep. Yeah, and why do you think I have that there in my C's.rb? Because you want to start with a clean category. Yeah, because if I run it twice, I don't want to have duplicates of the categories. Okay? Then um, who wants to say what line number 12 does? It's an easy one. When bit you get an easy one? Uh, you create a, a group. Huh? You create, create uh, an entry of category. It has many attributes like titles, group. Yeah, perfect. Okay, good. Um, now, um, uh, yes? I'm sorry, speak up. Oh, this. Um, uh, the, true, the, the reason I have it here, and I was researching this, well, first of all, who can say what this does and why it's here, and then uh, at least somewhat guess why it's here? 
Okay, because for reasons that I not, didn't bother looking into, uh, this thing returns a, a set, potentially a set. And so I'm just picking the first one to get the actual <coughs> uh, in, in, uh, in the um, so the case of clothing, to get an instance of the category model here, an instance of the category class. If I don't have this array, like you can later on try to remove it as well, actually. Isn't category supposed to be an object? Pardon? Isn't category a uh, class? A so class. That, that all clothing is, uh, is an object. Well, also, why do you only have it for that one? Yeah. yeah. Ah, that is because if you look later, it's the only one I actually use in my sample. Ah, got it. Yagni. Which means? So Yagni? No. Yagni? You ain't going to need it. I put it in when I need it. Let's, uh, let's run this for the hell of it and see what happens. So I'm going to go Rails console. Uh, put, it over here. Uh, put it over here. Uh, put it over here. And I'm going to just put this in without this. And you see that? It executed it. It did the insert, which is the, you guys taking the database class. Here's how you can figure out what, what SQL to write. Write in an active, um, an active model and delete it. And you learn all your SQL. Uh, but in the end, it, 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 it created a transaction, ended the transaction, and returned me a set. Okay, and the set happens to have only one thing in it. So if I check, oh, I didn't put the assignment. Uh, uh, clothing, and I see what is in clothing, and I see what the class is of clothing. Um, yeah, I don't. Uh, it seems like it interpreted because if I have uh, let's see clothing dot class clothing sub zero. Yeah, you know what? There's something different that's happening that I didn't bother researching that's causing it in this context to return not a, yes? Um, it, you could give it a has many relationship with items. Yeah. Does that make it a set because it has many items? I don't think so because um, it doesn't know. I don't think so because it would have happened in IRB. It would have happened in the console. It gives you an error if you don't put that zero? Yeah, it does. Uh, let's, do you want to see it? Let's, yeah. Let me show you. Oh, because it gives a type active record. If I now do rake db seed oh okay rake db migrate might as well do a reset I just picked this off of um, github <coughs> rake db seed <coughs> oh well uh, oh and then if I say clothing no, sorry, category dot all. Oh, God. Um, Rails console. Category dot all. Um, let me think. What I have to do is really look at all my items dot all. No. No. I don't know why I had it. I wonder if I'm running a slightly different version of Rails here than I am at home or something. Anyway, so, well, we did a little bit of, of troubleshooting. Okay, where was I? How far did we get? Um, uh, hey, what's line 17 doing? Take a look at, I'm going to make you stick with um, uh, line 24. What is that doing? Um, Pardon me? Okay, sample returns a random member of an array. making a, a fake name of uh, uh, clothing. So a color and a sample. And then I have something called description, and that's taking an adjective, my favorite, the perfect, the great, 
and then the name and the title. So I'm just generating a bunch of fake item names. Uh, yes? Couldn't you possibly have the same like, item creation? Yes, yes. But the name is the same. It'll be a different item ID. It's okay. So this, this does play into a comment I made at some point in, in, um, uh, in, in class, which is the notion of building real or real-looking samples for your app. Um, it's very tempting when you try to experiment something like this to have item one, item two, item three, item four, because it's really easy to do. But if you want to get a feel for how your UI looks and how it feels, uh, it's really important to put in either real or real-looking data. And this is a classic way to create real looking mm -hmm. data. Just come up with a, a fake sentence and generate it. So if I want to have 100 <laughs> items, I can just change it to 100 and I'll have 100 items. And you know, you, can, um, you, know, you can have owners. I have owners with first name, last name, a very classic way is to have a bunch of first names, a bunch of last names, and mix and match those to make a whole bunch of owners. And in fact, there's whole, whole gems devoted to doing this more easily. <laughs> because anything that everybody does, usually somebody wrote a gem to do it. But I won't get into that now. Clear? OK. Um, so, uh, migrations, there was one per table at this stage in the game, nothing magic going on, nothing magic going on in the seed either. Let's take a look at Bootstrap. Now I know some of you struggled with Bootstrap, and I did too, uh, and so I took some time to figure out a way that worked and that was the most simple. And, and, and this is a trap that happens when you're working with any platform, whether it be Python or Java or Ruby um, or anything else that there is a mass of libraries that you want to use. And they often make your life a lot easier. However, the more vague things you add together, the more difficult it is to figure out why things are not working. And sometimes the way to go is to go totally, totally simple, remove all the gems that are relevant, and just do it by hand. And that's what I did, OK? So if you look at the code, is that a hand? Yeah, kind of. I wanted to ask you earlier. Yeah. I was having trouble with that using reset all in the, in the uh -huh. console. I was well, doing reset all on some. It's, a, it's not the console, it's on the shell. It's a command in the shell, not in the not in pry or IRB. Is that what you meant? Yeah. The in other words, I'm sitting, oops, sorry. Like, yeah, like the one you used in the seat. Yeah, but I'm sitting in the, in the, in the, in the Unix shell when I do it. Break db reset all. db migrate reset is what it is. It doesn't know what I'm talking about. I'm talking oh. about the one you used in the seat. Oh, oh, to, oh. To reset like all the data in the. Oh, the to destroy all. This. Oh yeah, destroy all. <coughs> yeah. It What's the problem you having me yesterday? So I was doing that, yeah. and I was hoping the database will be cleaned. Is it just removes all the records. Yes. But then when I was trying to create an item, it said that an item already exists. Or I have like to that. look at it. I mean, yeah, it only destroys some categories. So if you, you'd also have to use item not destroy all. No, I'm not. I mean, <laughs> I'm talking about NS. Any particular any particular table, yeah, it should yeah. do that. So if it's not doing that, remember Amin and I are very available. Send an email, post, you know, upload your code to GitHub, ask it to look at it, and we'll get it sorted for you. But it, it should work. It should basically take every record in that one database in the in that corresponding to that active record model and delete them all. This obviously has to be, by the way, the class of an active record model. Okay? Otherwise it won't work. Okay? Um, so, let's look, so Bootstrap, so I was telling you about keeping it very, very simple. So here's my version of keeping it very, very simple. I'm not using anything like called Bootstrap Rails or Rails Bootstrap or SAS Rails Bootstrap, all those things that I've seen and you've seen too, because I found that they were doing too much magic and I was not able to dominate them. That's not to say that you did not succeed, you might have, but for those of you who are still stuck, here it is. Um, first of all, before I do that, we know that um, for Bootstrap, we need to have a CSS and a JavaScript and sometimes a font or an image file. We need certain things in the HTML to get those files, right? Where did I get? Who did I get to so far in my going around the room? I think I got to, uh, yes, Burke, right? So there are certain lines I have to put in my HTML to, to, to get those libraries. Where do I put them in my HTML? Say louder. In the head section, yes. Yeah, that's correct, OK. So within Rails, now what page should I put that in, in the head section? What HTML page? You know, your, your app has many, many different pages, right? I mean, for which person? For, let's say for, for, let's say for Bootstrap. To, to see in every page? Yeah. 
Exactly. So you, you answered two questions. So the first question was, just tell, talk, but both correct, was where in HTML, what HTML file should I put this in, generically forgetting about Rails for a second, and the answer is everyone. Every single HTML page that my server generates <coughs> has to have those lines in it. Okay? Then the second question was, okay, if I want to achieve that, where do I put it in a Rails application? And you answered? In what directory? As an aside, if you have your hand up and I don't call on you, don't feel like I don't like you. It's generally because I'm trying to make people that don't put their hand up as often have a chance to talk. So don't, don't you know who you are. Don't feel like I'm, I'm, I'm not noticing. I notice everything. But yes, in layout slash application. So what is the layout directory's purpose in Rails? Steve. Sorry, sorry. What is the purpose of the layout directory in Rails? But can you be more mechanical? Like technically, what does it do? No, it's okay. Okay. Um, it holds. It holds your style sheets. And, uh, essentially, holds your your base page that you load through, you know, CSS Bootstrap style sheet. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Um. Did you have your hand? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it that it holds? Uh, your layout, layouts that you define that <coughs> you want to access from within different views. Yeah, you know? it does. It does, but, but there's one that's, that's, that's the outer shell. So if you look at an HTML page, you can imagine that, let me say, an uh, HTML page that's showing the result, uh, that's showing an item, let's say, uh, showing information about items. That there's some HTML that every page in the site has, and we put that in application. Dot dot HTML WRB. But there could be information that everything, all the pages that relate to items, they all have that in common. In addition to the outer frame, they have another inner frame. And this could be called items dot HTML or item, I don't know, items, I think, HTML dot ERB. Both of these in the layout directory. And so to accommodate this very, very typical nesting of HTML, which is very common, um, they build this mechanism of layouts. And so every page that Rails generates is going to include the stuff in the outside and layout plus applications of HTML ERB, and everything in the item that's the item view is going to include this. Now that's the default behavior. There's a lot of more fancy things you can do, but the general concept is, and, and we'll come up with this theme over and over, if you find yourself writing the same HTML in more than one place, copy and pasting, that's an alert. You're not dry. And you have to think about what tool you can use to make your code dry. It's always bad to have duplication because, well, we know why. OK. So, um, so oh, yeah. So let's look at the, I was talking about Bootstrap. So I'm going to go to Views, Layouts, Application.html.erb. <coughs> OK, I can't. What do you think line four does? No, not, not say that. I don't even know what that does. <laughs> Let's say, what do you think line 10 does? Can you read it from there? <coughs> you can feel free to move if you, if you can't see it well. Yeah. Yeah. And more than that, it generates the corresponding HTML to include a jQuery file because you notice that it's not. No, actually, this is, I'm, I'm lying. This is strict, this is HTML. So that's what it does. It includes the jQuery file. Now, notice the other thing is, remember I said that I'm not using any magic gem for, for Bootstrap, okay? Notice what I am doing, and this is just copied off the Bootstrap site. Um, I think that the default stuff you get when you do a vanilla brand new Rails app is line one, two, three, four, five, and six. And I added line 8, 9, and 10. And the first one is doing uh, something to, to do with controlling how layout works vis-a-vis -vis the kind of output device you're on. Uh, the second one is including the Bootstrap CSS. Now, do I have the Bootstrap CSS in my Rails app? Do I have it in my assets directory, or don't I? You don't. How do you know? 
you're using it straight URL. Like a okay, and who's where's that coming from? I mean, what does that mean? And is that a good idea? No, no uh, mumbling under your breath. I don't know. Yeah, what? Uh, it means that it goes on the web to go get the CSS files yep. rather than having them, I don't know, if it, locally. locally on yeah, is that an advantage, disadvantage, or it doesn't matter, uh, in your opinion? Because it's, it's an opinion question. I would guess it doesn't matter in this case, yep. but it's a disadvantage. In some cases? Yeah. Because? Because, I don't want to say, if the internet's down or that site's down, you can't get yep. the... Of course, then you couldn't get this either, but you're right. You're relying on the reliability of that site called netdna.bootstrapcdn.com. Uh, William, what does the letter CDN in this URL tell you? CDN. CDN, yeah. Uh, Bootstrap CDN. That's a telltale abbreviation. Oh, I didn't know, sir. No idea? Any idea? Anybody, anybody have an idea? I'll throw this open. Yes? Content delivery network? Louder. Content delivery network? Yeah, what, is, what does that concept in general mean? I don't have the first definition of it, but it's basically a network that helps deliver content and helps. Excellent! Yeah! yeah. Um, I believe it just helps optimize it for rotation yeah, it's, it's generally a concept that exists in many different, some of you have applied to jobs at Akamai. Akamai had its start as being CDN of, of all CDNs. To make things perform better, if, if I'm watching a video on YouTube and I'm sitting in Australia, instead of sending that big video all the way over, if that's a hot video, a content delivery network might provide an alternative source for that video. And so this is just, I'm just giving this as a matter of general interest. And when you see CDN, that sort of tell, gives you a little information. Okay. Uh, so the big advantage is obviously uh, that you don't have, but the big disadvantage is you're reliant on the reliability of that. So if that thing is slow, your site is slow. The big advantage, of course, is that, in my mind, that it doesn't have to be part of your app. It's one less thing to maintain to get out of date. You can be sure that if there's a patch, um, and oh, it would change numbers. In this case, it's tied to a certain number. But the jQuery one, which is doing the same thing, we're getting it off the jQuery side. And basically, I have a promise that this is going to be the latest stable, or latest officially released version of the <coughs> Yes? But that too will cause trouble. Because what if that uh, script is updated? It might become incompatible with the... Uh, yeah, if you're depending, if, you're, if your code is um, dependent, will break with another version of, of jQuery, then you, you could have a problem. It's like, you're right, you're totally right. And that's a real world scenario. You may um, decide to put a version number on here, or you might think of this kind of what you implied as a good way to bootstrap yourself, quote unquote. But when you become a big production site, you may want to have it locally. In general, though, one point is that it's not uh, a good idea to modify, even if you had it locally, your copy of jQuery or your copy of Bootstrap. Um, why is that not a not a good idea? I don't know. Okay, Alex. I imagine you could kind of instantiate your own errors because you're doing. Yeah, that's a good reason, but there's an even more powerful reason, I think. Miranda. Um, I think there are really large libraries that's hard to figure out something or debug it. Well, for me, anyway, the, this is not a, this is just subjective questions. So it's not really fair, but yes, go ahead. Um, well, it shows you would never be able to update it. Yeah, exactly. It makes your life updating more difficult. You know, if you leave it untouched, then leave it untouched. If you have to modify the behavior of Bootstrap, what you do is you put another line that looks just like this one in, under <coughs> it, where you look for a style sheet, for example, called custom.css that is in your directory and starts out empty, and you put individual little rules in there as you go. If you look at, um, for example, going back to my, my app, since that's always a uh, handy reference. Uh, uh, no. Uh, 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 uh. you'll see that I do basically the same thing. Uh, and here I have my own custom.css. I have those right off the same place, same idea. And if you look at my custom.css, this is not Rails, but it's the same idea. You will see that there's just one file, 
and it's got this in it. So this, these are my overrides to Bootstrap, all separate. So when I upgrade to a new version of Bootstrap, I don't have to go find where I changed the color from another color. Yeah. Ordering in the HTML file. So it reads one in, then it reads the next one in. The next one will. Uh, make sure that ours is the next one. Oh, because you're, well, um, uh, pardon? Oh, is that what you were asking, or are you talking about the whole file? You're sitting next to her, you can't hear her. Kai, speak up. <laughs> <laughs> it's never going to be on the tape. You this mean if Bootstrap makes a certain color, you want to make it a new color? Yeah. If you give it a class or an ID and then put that in your CSS and overwrite whatever was in Bootstrap, just because of the ordering. Yeah, for example, George, here I have navbar inver inverse, and I say background <laughs> color is black. So this is overwriting the same rule that's sitting in. Okay. The question was, how do, we, how do we know that this file will be loaded after the bootstrap CSS file? Okay. Uh, Jacob, how do we know that this file is going to be loaded after? Let's go back to Rails, since this is just not, not relevant exactly. Um, here we are in Rails. How do we make sure that the, the custom CSS gets loaded after the bootstrap CSS? If you place the link to the custom, if you place the link to the custom below the link to the bootstrap, yeah. It's just the order in the text. And this is application HTML. And you must put the custom thing into assets. In, into some, some other view. Yeah, but I would add a line here. That's maybe what you didn't catch. And this line would say href. You know. No, no, you would just put, this is going to be just rules. So this is going to be, you know, my CSS, my CSS.CSS <coughs> with some directory. I don't remember what it is. Maybe it's assets slash CSS, something like that. And then it's going to get it off my assets uh, subdirectory after it's finished loading this. What's throwing you off? Maybe, maybe is it this yield command, which... This is where, yeah, I was going to get to that. Th what does this yield command do? So this is the, the, the actual view, which is like the actual exactly. HTML yeah. of your view file. Yeah, exactly. And so if we put this custom CSS line in, in there, yeah. then it will be loaded after, after the boost. Yeah, but if you put it where I have it, it will also be loaded. Yeah, yeah, sure. But yeah. I mean, like, if I want a certain specific CSS only for specific. Oh, yeah, view. of course, of course, of course, yes. Yeah, you can put it wherever you want. But you don't put it in there, like you said, in the items? Yeah, you can yeah. put it here, you can put it here, you can put it here. You can put it wherever you want, depending on how, what the scope is. That's a matter of design. Okay? <coughs> okay? Yes, Jacob. Um, just to go off that, for when you're linking to the style sheet, if you had it in the other one where you'd be yielding to, yeah. the style sheet would actually have to be in the head. So, what's <coughs> the problem? Oh, that's a good point. Um, but I think I have to go. I have to look at it to be sure. Uh, anybody know for sure? Can you put a link command in the body, or there's another notation? I'm sure you can do it. You can, if nothing else, put a style. I think it's a. Style tag. We'd have to look at it, but that's a that's a that's a good point. I bet you can, though. I'm not totally positive. Yes. You can put style tags anywhere. It's just convention to put everything in the head because it just lets people know where to look for them. Okay. All right. Okay. I see I'm wasting, not wasting, but um, I'm not getting to the good stuff. Uh, so that's Bootstrap. Okay, one more thing, a couple more things. Uh, partials. You will all have seen underscore form.html.erb, yes? Um, when then, what does that do? Why is that there? In other words, uh, for example, you might have seen, maybe you didn't, that when I create anything with the uh, any view, any uh, any view with a scaffold, mm -hmm. it creates something called underscore form that HTML that ERB. Do you have any idea why and what that does? I think maybe your application wasn't reused really this stuff. Uh, yeah. So it's very uh, it's very useful to put your stuff independently in a separate file. And yeah. When you want to reuse it, just render. Yeah, exactly. What's the buzzword for what that ki that kind of file is called? A. A partial. A partial. A partial. Yep. Exactly. Um, so that's one way, is use a partial. Uh, the other way is, um, I didn't write it up, but the other way is to write a helper function. I'll show you that in a minute. Finally, seed data, we talked about that. Okay, 
Good. Now let's talk about forms. So conceptual. Okay. Here's a simple thing. If you want an action by the user to send information back to the server, you need a form conceptually. You need a form tag and a closed form tag. Okay. Why? Oops. <laughs> Why does the implementation of a form in Rails always require two actions, two controller actions? Eddie. Okay, one is called new and one is called create. Oh, new is just to create Okay, no. <laughs> Okay. I don't, I don't dismiss the post like I'm actually supposed to be yeah. redirected to the page. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I'm trying to get beyond the you know, I saw it so I copied it to like why, uh, why Burke. Okay, that's cool. Why uh, what is the why does um, uh, the processing of a form in Rails take two actions, generally for example to create a new item, it's a new action and a, and a create action. Why are there two? Go ahead. No, okay. I actually kind of have partially a question in this regard. A partial question, yes. If, so I implemented search. Can you first answer the question or not? I don't know that I have a great answer. Okay. I know that the idea is to handle two different actions. Yeah. Um, so if you say, if, if you want um, the new form, that's yeah. a get request for yeah. the new, and it creates the form and, and kind of gives you a place to put the things in, and then when you hit submit, it usually does post, and then it calls create right. to do the actual action. Right. I somehow managed to implement my search yeah. with just get search. Like uh -huh. there's no, I have one, I have one method and one in, in the controller that handles displaying and the actual search, and I don't know why that works or necessarily why it shouldn't. Okay, I'd have to look at what crazy thing you did. I mean, I, I, I could imagine as you talked, I could imagine you could do something, uh, but uh, it's unusual. Yeah. Because if anything more complicated, it would become a mess. Because you have basically one method probably has a big if at the front that says if it's the first time versus if it's not the first time. Or it something. just checks the parameters. Yeah. Well, so you're, you you yeah, you could check. listen. We could write a whole Rails server with one method if we wanted to. But yeah. So, so so the 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 the, the, the politically correct answer is that you need two actions. One that displays the form. So when you do a when the server when the browser says get, what it gets back is the HTML for a form. And another one, because remember, every action corresponds to one URL interaction between the client and the server. So you need one to say, here's the HTML for the form. And then you need another one, where this, another request to the server, where it says, here's the data that the user typed in. So there's two distinct interactions, once when you display the form and once when you click Submit. That's why you need two actions. Outside of the um, built-in new create, how yep. do you specify that to the form? So when it says submit, how do you tell it not to just call get? How do you tell it to call this okay. other there's route? A I'll show you code, but there's a couple of answers. Okay. One of them is that you use the routes generated path method uh, methods to in the form tag that says here's where you want to go when okay. you have a put. And that same line, there's a thing that says you can want to do a put or a get or whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So you can defeat the official conventions of using a put for a uh, for a for for a submit button, yeah. you can use a post, you can use a head, you can use whatever you want because you're handling it on the other side. Mm -hmm. But uh, other things will break. But you could do that. Yes. Okay, I'm just following that. Uh, how would you generally like all these things are predefined in Rails, like what a what a form does and what yep. a button in the form does. Yeah. How do you just create a like a, a new thing like that that mm -hmm. is not in any way predefined with its own completely distinct not get or post or put or Okay, there, there. Okay, so you're asking several questions. First of all, is you only have a fixed set of. Uh, remember, the whole thing is HTTP. That, that's the center of the universe. The all the only kind of requests that can be go, go from the browser to the server. Period. End of story. Are those eight verbs? Well, so my, my question was, can you define just uh, like a, an HTML button yeah. that just directly calls a controller method yeah. with no other yeah. complications? Anybody want to explain briefly how you would do that? George, explain briefly how you would do that. 
there's some message which calls something in button to underscore two. Yeah. And then you <coughs> insert the the string which should be displayed on the button in the um, controller slash message name uh, which should be called mm -hmm. in the controller message. And the message is message column where you put in get or post. Yeah, that scenario, the button is acting like a link. It's really what you're saying. And so that's absolutely possible. It, it, you know, it's like a link. Why a link does a get, but you can override that, I'm sure. I don't even know how you would do it to make it do something else. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but the other question you might have been asking was, you know, what's it going to be form for and form tag? Which I'm gonna, I'll, I'll show you in code in a few minutes. Did you have a question? Okay, all right. Um, okay. So the thing to remember is, Speaking just HTML, forgetting about Rails, this is a universal truth that working on, on C Sharp and .NET or whatever, is the grouping created by the form and form is surrounds the HTML items that are going to correspond to the data you want to send back to the server. And the submit button is going to trigger that sending back to the server. And it's going to look at the intermediate uh, fields and items and select box and all that stuff to collect up the data to send back to the server. Okay. Uh, that was a little bit of a white lie. There's, there's special cases where you can defeat some of the stuff, but that's a really very, very good working theory. Okay. Uh, um, where did I get? John, I think um, uh, I say here, when you push the, um, the submit button, sending is always done, Jonathan, with an HTTP request. Typically, uh, as I said, that's a, that's a, um, that's a post. Um, what do you think I mean when I say the payload is always name value pairs, value is always text over the wire? Okay, so the payload, the, were you parsing that or was it like, I have no idea what that means. I parsed it but I have no idea what okay, it It's means. English, you know that, yeah. but that's about it. Okay, got it. Yeah. So basically, the, when I say payload, I say the thing the form is sending back to the server when you hit submit. It's remember that the in the context of HTTP messages back is going to be text, and essentially there's going to be a, a block of parameters, and the parameters are going to have a textual name that you made up, nothing magic about them, and a textual value. Even if it's a number or a date, it's a textual value. And when it arrives on the other side in the action, okay, you're going to get those textual values. You have the textual name and the textual value. And then the job of the action, the create action, let's say, is to take that text name value pair and correctly modify the database accordingly. Or not. Like if it's a search, you're not modifying the database at all. You're taking that name value pair and performing a search. OK? So let's, um, let's, take, a look at, let's take a look at the HTML. Um, please go, let's start with this, the simple, this, well, I don't remember which is the simplest. So go to um, category, views, categories, um, form. And let's take a little tour of this code. Uh, uh, I'm just going to talk about it, but this gets a little bit tricky. So the first line, form four, is one of two ways to create a form tag in HTML when you're working with Rails. One of them is form four, the other one is form tag. Form four does a little bit more magic, does a little bit more things automatically, supposedly to help you. Form tag is a little bit less magic, but you feel like you have a little bit more control. I have an example of both in this code, okay? So if you remember, in the controller that launches this form, that would be the what controller? Category controller. Category controller. Yep, exactly. So, what what action here is launching that form? I'm creating a new um, I'm creating a new category. So I did the pardon. Create. So as soon as you submit it, I hit a button on the on the screen that says new. Okay, it, it's gonna call the new first and then typically call the new first. Right? Yeah. Now somebody well. asked. That's correct. Somebody asked in an email or a Piazza post, um, what happens to these variables in the session, the params, over time? Does it disappear? The thing to realize, which is kind of confusing, is every time a request comes to the Rails server, 
this thing is erased and starts over. Okay? In particular, at category equals category.new, that's creating a new instance of the category class. It's not on disk, it's not in the database, it's just in memory. The next time the re a request comes in, for example, to do the actual create, this puppy is gone. Okay? So, query, I mean, I'm going to answer it myself. Uh, why, what's the point of this? What is the point of this? The point of that, unless somebody can take a stab, George. Um, or whatever is create um, assigned as class attributes, um, object attributes, the controller can be used by uh, those functions here. This is what the, um, I assume that the view is just connected to this controller. Which view is connected to this controller? Show. Right, and this says. Okay, but we were actually talking. Uh, maybe I was talking. Wait, hang on. Was I in the wrong one, or was he in the wrong one? I'm talking about this one. Line eleven. Okay, so we look at the new category. The new. It says this. What does that mean? Okay, let's look at the partial called form. And it's here. Okay, so you say that it set up the category so this thing can use it. Okay, how is it using it? true, but more interesting in a way, because this is just pretty conventional, is that it's getting used here. Form 4. Oh. That's, the, that's the trickery. That is the key difference between Form 4 and Form tag. It's examining that object, which it is assuming is an object from active record, and it's examining all the properties and attributes and so on, and using that to default a lot of things. For example, I'm not saying what URL to do the post to. For example, uh, there's, um, see I just do have to submit here, I don't have to say anything. I don't have to say anything up there because it's analyzed the name of that instance. It's analyzed what the fields are and various defaults are put in, what the data types are, or maybe even. And it's using various defaults. So the big purpose for doing that category.new at that in the action is so form four can use it. It's secondarily what George said, which is if there are errors from the previous transaction, they're going to show up now. So that submit will always default to create? It's always going to default to, unless with, without other properties, it's going to default to a post to slash category, category slash, slash um, It's calling the create method. It's calling create method. Yeah, it is ending up calling the create method. Well, let's look at the, did you, you, do you want to correct me? Sure. If it's uh, if it's uh, automatically like that, if the the at category the item, if it's blank like new, mm -hmm. it will go to create. Ah yes. But if it has uh, some items, for yeah. example, when you want to update or edit, it will go to update. Yes, that's oh, okay. it's, so it's more magic. Yeah. And the interesting thing is the scenario that this is this is taken care of as well as uh, as well as this is when you did a create of a category and it failed the validation. If it fails the validation, it gets sent back to the same spot. And now the instance of at category now contains those errors. If it fails the validation, um, which would be here, I don't have any failure of validation, but if it did, category save would fail and it would redirect back to category giving this notice and that's what would end up in that funny looking error block in the HTML page for the form. Somebody asked, how does the form error work and can I ever move it or change it? This is exactly how it works. That's the plumb. It's very simple once you understand it. I saw a hand. I thought I saw a hand. No? Okay. All right. So um, let's go a little bit further and notice that um, I do still have to separately put the text that is the prompt for the field in the form, and I have to put the submit. Okay? 
this F, what does it F mean? Uh, Luca, where does it come from? It's from the form. Um, in this case, yeah, it's at the top. Form, yeah, form, form category form. do. Okay. Exactly. Yep. Okay, good. Uh, right. Da, 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 da. Okay, let's look at the form tag case, which is a different one. So now I'm going to go to uh, items, I think. Nope. Um, comments? I know I used it in one place. Hey. You said, should you put it right in search? Oh, I must have put it right in the search. It's right there. It's right there. Here it is. Yeah. So, and also you we can look at some bootstraps up here too. So in this case, I'm doing form tag. I say there do search items path. Miranda, where, where did that come from? How do I know that that's what I should type? Your, uh, great routes. Yeah. One of your helper yes. If I go to my rake routes, ah, uh, right, rake routes. <coughs> I uh, will see here, search items, that's the path that is used to display that form. And then do search items is the path that is used to submit the search criteria. Why not post? Pardon? Why is it again not post? Um, because I thought that was a little bit more appropriate because I wasn't posting anything, but that's one of those things that are open for debate. People spend, you know, write dissertations on it, literally. It just, yeah, it just, it happened for mine that it was get, and I couldn't figure yeah. out why it wasn't post. So okay, well, why, well, there's two questions. Why is it post, or how would I make it post if I wanted to? Those two different questions. Yeah, okay, so let me just quickly show that. So we, anytime you see something about your rake routes, you look at routes.rb, okay? So we look at routes.rb. Oh, no. We will see here that under items, under the resource items, I have two collection-based uh, paths. One is called search and one is called do search, and they're both gets. Wait, why do you have two anyway? One to, do, one to display the search form and one to do the search. Remember, every form, two actions. One to display the form, one to do the work. That's sort of the, that's sort of the pattern. If I um, sent them both to the same action, which I could, which is what um, it works. Is, then yeah. you have to, what do you have to do to make that work? What, you need something new, because if you want to make one action, which is one method, do two jobs, you need to do what to make it work? You have to have a conditional. You have to have a conditional. You say, am I in one case or the other case? And he did it by looking at the parameters. But it's not, not a... No, it's definitely better to have two different Not an elegant way to do it, but it's... No, 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 it's cool. But so if you wanted to put post, post, that's where you would do it, right here. So you just change to post. Yeah, and then it's going to, and so the effect of that, if you think about it, is this. The server gets called with an HTTP request that looks like slash do search, or actually slash item slash three slash, no, slash item slash do search with a post in my scenario, and the router is going to go error. I don't know what to do with the post, and you see that error. No route okay. four. Yeah. So then you say, oh, I've meant the post. So you go change this and then it'll work. So you can always go back to your rake routes, go back to what you understand about HTTP and think it through. Although I think yeah, it makes more sense. On the I think it, it does too. Because you're not actually adding any information to the system. All you're doing is requesting specific. Yeah, so exactly. Right. exactly. But it's definitely one of those that you can go, you can, yeah, you yeah, can yeah, argue. It can, it can be argued either way. Yeah. But yeah, it does make more sense. Okay, so going back to what I was looking at. Um, no, the other one. Okay, so, so again, do search items path. I learned the name of that by looking at the rake routes. I'm telling it to use method get. When I say use method get, who can expand what the effect of this is? Where did I get? No, you don't know? Okay. What does it mean? When, form, when the form HTML tag is told to use method get. Um, it sends the data via get. When what, ha yes? When you click submit. Exactly, when you click submit, which is all the way down here, because you're inside the form, it says, ah, this is the URL I should use. 
and this is the, the HTTP noun I should use, or verb I should use. Okay, yeah. Quick question. Roll equals to form. I think that's just for your bootstrap, right? Yeah. Okay. It's actually not only for bootstrap, it's, um, uh, yes, it's, so it's just for bootstrap, yeah. Um, okay. So yeah. you see you have a lot of control. Notice that oh, this get refers to do search, not search. Search is coming through the, the regular routes. Yes, search is what shows the form. Yes, exactly. Um, what else? Notice the various call dash md dash offset one, call dash md four. That's all bootstrap markup. Notice it's class. That means this particular div is marked by two classes, those two. Uh, here I have another div. Div, remember, create is, is gives an, uh, a boundary to a rectangular area on your screen. So this rectangular area, which includes the label and a dropdown, is labeled with class form group. I got that right out of the bootstrap documentation. Then there's a label tag. Then there's a select tag. Okay, select tag, um, the and this is true in general. The first thing here is, the remember I said when you press submit, the data from the form is sent back to the, to the server slash to the controller with the data from the form, and I call that the payload. And I said it's a set of name value pairs. So the fact that this says here is if we examine the payload, that's returned to the server when I click search, there's going to be one variable called category ID. Okay? And it's going to have a value. Value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's how the value of this drop down is going to be communicated back to the server. So let's take a look. Yes? Uh, just real quick, which, which bit of code says it's a drop down? Select. Select that. Select tag that, that just creates a drop down. Yeah. But a lot of the class stuff is going to indicate exactly what it looks like. But basically, this is a drop down, a list of choices where you can pick, I think it's one of many. There's probably other options to allow you to pick multiple, et cetera, et cetera. But conceptually, it's going to always add one value to your payload. The value, the variable is going to be called uh, category ID. What's the value going to be? Let's take a look. All right. so. Uh, rail server. Oh wait, let me put a breakpoint in. Um, Give a typo there, by the way. Where? Uh, category. category. Give me a line number. Uh, ten. Eight, ten. Ten. Where's my? Where's my? Uh, category ID. Cat. Oh, but. Oh yeah, I, I, had, I didn't implement it. That's why I didn't notice. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to go to my controllers. Items controller. Here's my do search, right? That's the thing we're talking about. So I'm going to put a breakpoint in here. I'm going to run my server. Oops. Everybody good? I'm going to go to my browser, open a tab, type that, slash, oh, no. Uh, items slash search. Why did I not hit the breakpoint? Um, Eddie, no. Yes, Eddie. Why did I not hit the breakpoint? You know, okay. You look um, like you know. Isn't it on the submit? Yeah, it's on the submit. I haven't hit submit yet. <laughs> but here's my nice drop downs. Okay, so they work. Pick one, two, Search. Now I hit my breakpoint, I know because the thing stopped. So let's have a look here, see what we got. Where will I find my payload, folks? Params, right? But before that, we can actually look at the trace output from the server. It says, here's a get, item slash do search, and look at all the params, they're actually right in the, in the URL in this case. And it says here, category ID, remember I said that's the variable name, equals three. That's text. Okay, it's textual three. All right? So that means that if I, if I, and that's where the router analyzed this URL, parsed it up, 
and put it all on a silver platter for me in the action. So if I type params here, I'm going to see all our sum is 1, category ID is 3, title is foo, match no match is 1, commit, the, okay, don't worry about that. Why? Let's, I'm going to answer it myself, unless somebody wants to. Match no match is 1. Why is it number 1 and not some word? Yes? Who you specify that in the options for select? Let's, let's, let's take a look. That's exactly right. So if I go back to the search.html and I look at the match no match, I see here, and I will, um, I will lay it out more easily to read. The first parameter is a two-level array. The string is the first thing, and the number to return is the second thing. Okay? So the, matching, the string is what the user sees and what gets selected. Exactly. So for example, okay. I could say here instead, match, no match, and I could go here, and I could continue this, uh, refresh this page, matching, search, go here, back at the breakpoint, params, and now match no matches value is match. It's just text. It's a name value pair. All your results are name value pairs. They come as the payload to the form. Rails decides how it wants to represent that payload un based on certain other settings. In this case, it decided to put the payload strictly as a question mark uh, set of things on the URL, but it could have done it in, in the HTTP result itself as well. Okay? So that's cool. So all I have to do now is to implement my search. Look at my search, ladies and gentlemen, although this does not have the full logic. You can just literally do a little bit of active record stuff, saying active, and I want to find all the items where the title is params bracket title, i.e. this, category ID equals params bracket category ID, i.e. that. Now this is doing, is this doing an and or an or? And, right? So I have to do something else for the or, I have to do something else for the other parameters, but this is the gist of what you can do. So that, the one that didn't know exactly how to do the search, this is the, the key hint, is you can literally just use the SQL calls in Active Record to do the job. Okay? When you say render index... Here? Oh, uh, okay. I was trying to figure out... What, what does it do? Is. You tell me. Well, I mean, isn't that just sort of referencing um, index, the index view. Exactly, yeah. That. And notice that before I call render index, I assign a value to add items. If you remember what add index looks like, you will remember that it looks like this. Items.each. So it just displays the ones that result from that, <laughs> from that search. Can you, can you go to the items controller real quick? This from the last step. No, the, the in the code or in the source? In the code. In the source code. Uh -huh. Right here. Yeah. Here? Yeah. Hey, where is that? So, so if, because you said render, it's not going to call this method no more, right? Yes. It's, it's going to skip right into the It's view. not going to look for a do search view. It's going to jump and look for an index view. And it's going to render that instead. I mean, it's not going to call index the method. It's no. No, yeah. no. You can also do redirect, that which was done here, which would call the method. Yeah. I don't want to redirect because if I redirect, it's going to so do an item's all. Exactly. So okay? Yeah. So then put it. Okay? So, okay, but now let's, let's look at a slightly more interesting case. Um, first of all, I saw something and I, I pretend that I didn't see it, but you all saw it, and I don't know why before it was showing this blank. But this is more interesting, right? Here I have a dynamic list of categories, a dynamic list of categories. I can't type them in, that would be bad. Because if I add a new category tomorrow, it's not going to work, right? So, but we do know something. We know that that select clause, because we looked at it, requires, oops, where's the HTML? Oops, sorry. We do know that the select clause here, this thing here, requires that I provide it a two-level array of the word I want to see in the dropdown and the data I want to include in the main value there, right? So. Query all ye active record experts. How would I create one of those for that includes all the names of all the categories and some number to return? Any guess? 
I need to write a few lines of Ruby that creates a two-level array with one entry at the top level for each category, and each entry having the name of the category and some number. What's a convenient number for me to use to refer to the category? It's ID. It's ID, right? So I want to make a two-level array that has the name of the category and its ID. I know you know that this is possible, but you're probably not quite clear on how you would do it, right? I, I did it. Okay. So, I just so sorry, it. no offense. <laughs> Go ahead. So I, I get all the categories. This is a technical interview. Write some code. No, I'm just kidding. I, I, I get all the categories. So uh, in my code, I could call mm -hmm. categories.all. Yep. And then I create an array of uh, the category title slash yep. category. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Exactly right. So if we look now, now here before I go, notice that in the equivalent line here, I refer to an at categories instance variable, which because it's an instance variable, was set up where? Controller. In the controller, right? In the which control which action in the controller? Uh, is this your search function? Huh? Search. The search action, right? So let's look at the search action. Look at that line and see if you can understand it. Um, uh, Burke, can you interpret that line for us? And we're talking about this line here, line 25. Let's break it down into pieces, okay? Category not all returns. Uh, yeah, so like this five, so five records. Map. Does what? Do you remember? Uh, takes one array and turns it into another array, essentially. That's how I think of it. Okay? And basically it walks to the first array, and for each one it returns this instead. So, so it assigns each. each, each, each item on the Well, so basically all is all of them. Map does a map function. So it iterates through this block once per category, assigning to the value C, the instance of the category model corresponds to that category. And we know instance, instances of active model have a dot title and a dot ID method. So I just say dot title, dot ID, put them in brackets, so it returns a little array, and I end up with a two-level array. Yes? In the views, we have categories, so we can same, so basically, th this is built with code. What I built over here uh, by hand with constants. Here, I just refer to it, and I was able to pass it in an instance variable because it was sitting there in that action. Okay. Okay. So that's how you do a select, and that's one of the trickiest ones uh, because of this business. Um, in general, you know, you know, avoid the temptation of just putting in the categories in by hand. If you can at all in your code, don't hardwire things. You hardwire them only because there's only two options. In a real product, you might even consider having a special uh, class defining the options to this, so you don't e ever even put this stuff in this code. You might also, by the way, consider in this scenario writing a helper. I'll, I'll show you another example of a helper. Oh. Shoot. Okay. All right. Well, I think I'm going to, um, we're going to stretch this out the next time because I think this is good stuff. Let me see how far I got in my notes. I didn't get to the more complicated case. Okay. We're going to continue with this on Friday and push the web services lecture a little bit out because I think it's really important. Um, but anyway, so this homework is due tomorrow. Do a nice job. Do a complete job, please. And thank you very much. See you on Thursday. Did you not record that? I did record it.